This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. A new football season gets underway this week, but I'm not talking about the NFL. The English Premier League gets back underway on Friday, so it's time to break down the season, talk some futures, and get ready for match week number one by talking to Austin Cass of FanDuel Research, picking his brain on what he sees across the EPL for this year at FanDuel Sportsbook. This is covering the spread, a FanDuel Research podcast. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a managing editor at FanDuel Research, joined here as mentioned by Austin Cass. He is a senior editor for FanDuel Research. Check out Austin on Twitter, at Austin Cass. Austin, a pleasure to have you back on the show for today. How has your, uh, I guess, quote-unquote, off-season been for the EPL? Uh, it was really good, yeah. Just still a busy soccer summer, so I enjoyed that. But yeah, I'm ready for the league to get started. There really, it just felt feels like there was no time off. Like I know this is like a talking point for soccer players, like how stringent their schedule is but like when do they rest because i'm very curious about this i don't i don't know that's a great question because a lot of those top guys moved right from club season straight into training camps for the euros or for their national team and then if they go deep in that tournament there's only really like one or two weeks maybe they could get off before they got to get going here for the league season so it's definitely a big talking point and probably a reason there's so many injuries in yeah. seasons after big international tournaments but yeah it's as a fan it's it's fun to have soccer all the time but i definitely worry about the players absolutely uh but hey it's back in our lives beginning this week first match is on friday so for today we're going to go through the futures markets with austin we'll talk about uh all season changes uh anything that's shifted or hasn't shifted across the off season we'll talk about the top of the table for this year we'll talk about golden boot uh, other futures and of course Austin Sarah bets across match week one at FanDuel Sportsbook. But first, a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to the Covering the Spread podcast feed wherever you get your podcasts. Two more shows coming up this week. I'll talk NFL preseason week two tomorrow. And then on Friday, Austin Swain will join me to break down his top bets for USC 305. To get those shows as they are posted, search for Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcasts. Hit subscribe. And if you like what you hear, leave us a five-star rating and review as well. Of course, the show does go up on the FanDuel YouTube page and FanDuel TV Plus as well. If you like what you hear, leave us a thumbs up on the FanDuel YouTube page or go to FanDuel.com slash watch and log in with your FanDuel account to watch Up and Adams, Covering the Spread, Heat Check, Solo Shot, all in the same place. You can also download the FanDuel TV Plus app on your Amazon Fire, Apple TV, or Roku device. The dog days are here in the coolest place to get in on the MLB action is FanDuel, America's number one sports book, because this summer, FanDuel's hooking up all customers with a boost or a bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every day all summer long. You can score bigger winnings in any inning with profit boosts, snag bonus bets for home runs every Tuesday, even beat the heat with no sweat bets. So head over to FanDuel and start making the most of your summer. FanDuel, official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball, must be 18 plus in DC and 21 plus in present in select states. Opt in required. Wager requirements apply. Bonus is awarded as non trouble bonus bets or profit boost tokens. Restrictions apply, including bonus expiration. See terms and conditions at fanduel.com slash sportsbook. Gambling problem? Call 1 800 Gambler. Or visit FanDuel.com slash RG in Colorado, D.C., Iowa, Kentucky, Michigan, New Jersey, North Carolina, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Illinois, Tennessee, Vermont, Virginia, and Wyoming. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342 in Arizona, 1-888-789-7777, or visit ccpg.org slash chat in Connecticut, 1-800-9-WITH-IN-INDIANA, 1-800-522-4700 for the KSGamblingHealth.com in Kansas, 1-877-770-STOP in Louisiana, visit MDGamblingHealth.org in Maryland, 1-800-GAMBLER.NET in West Virginia. Hope is here. Visit GamblingHelplineMA.org or call 800-327-5050 for 24-7 support in Massachusetts or call 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY in New York. Now, Austin, a lot of soccer since we last talked EPL. So let's do a quick refresher on this league specifically. Which big changes should we know about before we take a look at this upcoming EPL season? So transfer-wise, there really hasn't been too many huge moves. Uh, there's There's been activity. I'm not sure if 
the international tournaments this summer are part of the solar market, but uh, the market is still open until August 30th. And I think we'll see some things happen. But with that said, there's still been 15 player transfers involving a Premier League team of at least $40 million, according to transfermarket.com. So things are happening. The three biggest moves in my eyes are Dominic Solanke moving from Bournemouth to Tottenham for $64 million. Uh, Manchester City sold Julian Alvarez to Atletico Madrid for $75 million. And Aston Villa uh, sent Douglas Lees to Juventus for $51.5 million. So those are, all, those are all big moves. Uh, I think once the season gets going, I'm sure we'll be able to look back at a few and realize that, hey, those were actually pretty big moves, even though the money wasn't massive. But for now, I think those are the three uh, big moves that like, kind of move the needle for me. And we'll touch on that with some of my bet re recommendations here in the next few minutes. Okay, so not a ton of big movement, which means we can kind of look back to last year. And remember that Man City had that come from behind win to win the title last year. They're plus 120 to win it this year. Sounds like all the key players are back for them. We look at the outright market, Austin. Any teams you think are undervalued entering this year? Yeah, so City have won uh, six of the last seven, four straight. Um, the last few years, they've ended up at plus money at various various points of the season. And last year was one of those when Arsenal was, at one point it seemed like Arsenal was going to win the league. But uh, if you just had a hard and fast rule of taking City anytime they were plus money, you would have come out very well over the last few seasons. Now, despite saying that, I'm actually going to tell you to back Arsenal at 165. <laughs> Uh, Arsenal put City all the way last year. City eventually won the title by two points. So Arsenal have already shown that they're fully capable of going toe-to-toe -to -toe with City over a 38-game league campaign. But there's two reasons I like Arsenal to finish the job this time around. One is their defense. Uh, they had the best defense in the league by a pretty sizable margin. They gave up 29 goals and 27.9 expected goals last campaign with the XG data coming from FB refs model. Uh, the 27.9 XG allowed was roughly eight fewer than any other team. That's a pretty significant margin. Prior to last season, the team that gave up the fewest XG had won six of the last seven titles. It's actually Man City all six of those times. Uh, with Arsenal returning all their key players defensively, I think they have a great shot to have the league's best defense again. And the other reason I'm back on Arsenal is because I think there's a chance City takes a small step back this year. The loss of Julian Alvarez, which I just talked about, I think he's a pretty big piece for them. He started 31 of their 38 league matches, had 11 goals and eight assists. He's a very good player, can play in a variety of roles, but he's also like a top tier backup striker for Holland, uh, Erling Holland. And I just think in general, I think his loss is going to be felt a little more than what people are thinking, just because City are such a machine and they've shown in previous years that it almost doesn't matter who's injured, who they have, who they've sold. They just find a way to get it done. So with all that said, I think there's a chance that City, who currently actually have a profit of $91 million this transfer window, there's a chance they go out here in these next two weeks and make a big signing to replace Alvarez. And I think that's definitely baked into these odds here. And they probably should overall be a slight favorite, but I think it should be a little closer than plus 120 and plus 165. So I see some value in Arsenal. Now, plus 120 and plus 165 for Man City and Arsenal means that they're sucking up quite a bit of the win equity. Do you feel like there's no one close to that top tier as being this is the definitively the top two? Because if they are, then I can I can understand why you'd be like, I understand Man City still want to back Arsenal plus 165. But do you think that Liverpool or someone else can inch their way into that top tier? Then maybe those prices might be a bit too restrictive. I think... If anything, they might be giving Liverpool a little too much credit. Okay. Liverpool, nice. And I, I had actually had prepared that in my notes yesterday when I was preparing for this. And Liverpool moved from 600 to 650. Ah. And Arsenal dropped from 170 to 165. So okay. Liverpool is a good team. I, I think I would be very surprised if we get to this spring and there's somebody else that has a very realistic shot to win the league besides city or Arsenal. Okay. Well, you mentioned Holland and let's go back to him. Uh, no Alvarez anymore to be a backup striker for them, but no surprise. Holland is the runaway favorite to win the golden boot for this year. He is minus minus one forty five in that market. 
nobody else shorter than 11 to one right now. So anybody stand out to you as far as having the most goals across this year? So I actually think you can make a pretty strong case for Isaac and Salah, the next two guys there at a, uh, 11 to one and 15 to one. So I'll start out with this Holland's minus 145 for a reason. He scored a ton of goals since he came to Man City two off seasons ago. He's won the Golden Boot each of the past two years. He's probably going to win it again if he stays healthy. He has 63 goals and 62 league starts. His out of this world. But whenever there's a season long individual player market like this with such a big favorite, I'm just naturally very intrigued by the other guys because all it takes is an injury to Holland, even if it's just a month long injury. And all of a sudden, all of these other guys like are really in play. Um, Holland has mostly stayed healthy uh, at City. He did miss a little bit of time last year and still won the Golden Boot. But injuries have been a problem for him previously in his career before he came to City. At Dortmund, he started only 21 domestic league matches in 2021-22 uh, season. Uh, as far as Salah and Isaac go, both of them play for teams that should score a lot of goals and they both take penalties. Isaac's my preference between the two. He scored 21 goals and 21 starts last season. And he ranks second in the league to Holland in both goals per 90 minutes and XG per 90 minutes. But really, for me, this market is kind of banking on Holland to miss some time if you're taking someone else. Obviously, I'm not rooting for that. Would, would hate to see that happen to him. But if he has a significant injury or misses five to ten matches, this market could get flipped on its head very quickly. So that's obviously a big variable in season-long player props. And to me, it makes Isaac and Salah pretty appealing at their big numbers. Yeah, those are always a factor in the equation for sure. As much as we don't want that to happen, it's a factor in betting markets. Holland has mentioned minus 145. You like Salah 11 to 1, but the preference is Alexander Isak 15 to 1 currently at FanDuel Sportsbook to be the top goal scorer for this year. Any other futures you want to snag before we get to this week's games, Austin? Yeah, my favorite future across any market is Newcastle to make the top six. Um, I'm not sure. I don't don't see it on your screen right now, but I gotta uh, I gotta mess with the URL to get yeah. out of Illinois. I didn't, uh, you know, didn't manipulate <laughs> things before we got on air here. But we'll uh, we'll pretend I'm shifting out to Jersey for a little bit here to see what they're offering over there instead. So it's my it was minus 140 last I saw it, and maybe it's been been down. Um, it'll probably be back up, I think. So I'll just run with it as if it was up, but. They had a pretty much a nightmare season last year, a ton of injuries and suspensions. Uh, they were in the Champions League last season, and I think those extra matches probably played a big role in some of the injury issues they had. But despite all that, they still got seventh last year. And I think their bad luck from last season is actually going to be of good luck for them this year because they're not in any European competitions, which means they only have to worry about the Premier League and the two league cups. Arsenal and City are basically locks for the top six. Uh, Liverpool will probably take a spot as well. So that leaves five teams, Newcastle, Tottenham, Chelsea, Aston Villa, and Man United to fight it out for three slots from fourth to six. The other four teams that I just mentioned, aside from Newcastle, all have European commitments and will probably make pretty deep runs in those competitions meaning that this spring they're going to have to balance big European nights as well as stretch run Premier League matches. Newcastle won't have that concern. But it's not all about that for Newcastle. Um, even with all their injury issues last year, they were fifth in XG differential. Among those five teams likely to be fighting for four through six, Chelsea was the only one with a better XG differential than Newcastle, and it was by just 1.8 goals. They're pretty even. So Newcastle check a ton of boxes for me. They're good. They have a schedule advantage on their main competition. They have a big home field advantage for their home matches. They have a quality coach and a top tier striker in Isaac, who we just talked about. And I actually kind of like them at plus 220 to make the top four as well. But I really like minus 140 to get in the top six. 
Okay, so you mentioned the top four number, and I think I did. Yeah, I got the top six eventually. I typed in New York as opposed to New Jersey to mm -hmm. try to mess with the URL. Um, I definitely know what the state abbreviations are for different okay. states. Good job, Jim. Um, but the Newcastle one you were talking about is still minus 140 for them to get inside the top six, as you were alluding to. And then the top four finish you mentioned was uh, plus 220 for them. Now, is that... Is the reason you went with the top six market because you've got kind of two spots already occupied by Man City and Arsenal where it's like, eh, I don't really think I can justify them working their way into one out of two slots? What was the thought process for you in dipping down to the more forgiving market? Uh, mostly dipping down to the more forgiving market, but also there's a chance. Uh, the, the reason top four market is a thing is because the Champions League used to be only the top four places. There's a chance this year that fifth place would make it. So there would could possibly be a scenario later in the year where Newcastle are in fifth and are just 100% content to finish fifth and not really trying sure. to finish fourth. So that would scare me a little bit. It's not a like 100% lock that the Premier League would get five teams. It's a pretty complicated coefficient based on how the English teams do in Europe this year. And they'll, you'll have a pretty good idea late in the year. But, yeah, there's just a chance that maybe they aren't super motivated to make the top four. So that's what pushed me to top six. I think that makes a lot of sense. Okay, so Austin is on Newcastle. To finish inside the top six, that is currently minus 140 at FanDuel Sportsbook. That is in addition to the Mo Salah and Alexander Isak Golden Boot Markets and the Arsenal to win it all, plus 165 recommendation from earlier. We do have the first matches of the year. They begin on Friday. We've got Man United taking on Fulham in the first match of the year on Friday. So, Austin, across match week one, which bets stand out to you? Uh, one of my favorite bets for this first weekend is actually in that very first game, Friday afternoon, Fulham, Man United. I like Fulham in the double chance market to win or draw. Last year, Manchester United really struggled. Uh, sorry, I think it's plus 140, yeah. Uh, last year, Man United really struggled en route to an eighth place finish. And as bad as eighth sounds for a club like Man United, it could have been worse. They actually finished 15th by expected goal differential. I'm not sure things will be a ton different this season. Uh, they'll likely have some better injury luck along the back line, which will help. But they've got a lot of the same players in midfield and attack, and they also have the same manager. Fulham, meanwhile, was actually one spot better than Man United by XG differential last season. They played United tough both times they faced each other. They lost 1-0 at home before winning 2-1 at Man United in the second half of the season. While United have the home field advantage here, Old Trafford wasn't a huge help to them last year. They were 14th in home XG potential. And I think Fulham may have the better striker in Rodrigo Munez, a 23-year-old who scored nine times in 18 starts last year and could be headed toward a breakout season. So all in all, I don't think United's going to be much improved this year. And I think this plus 140 number is a little too big for Fulham to win or Okay, so that is in the opening match of the year. Fulham taking on Man United in the double chance market. Fulham to either win or draw is plus 140 as they take on Man United. Plenty of other matches coming up on Saturday and Sunday, though, Austin. Maybe Monday? Uh, yeah, and Monday as yeah. well. So any other bets you like across match week one? So in the Bournemouth-Nottingham Forest match, I like Nottingham Forest money line at plus 135. A year ago, Bournemouth had 18 more points than Forest, but that point, point total is pretty misleading. By expected goal differential, the two sides were nearly even by 1.1 XG. And now Bournemouth are without Dominic Solanke, who I mentioned at the jump. Uh, he's their star striker. He's now at Tottenham. He had 19 of Bournemouth's 52 league goals last season, so he leaves a massive hole in their attack. They still have time to make some moves this window, but if they're going to bring in a number nine to replace him, they're Definitely running out of time to do it before Saturday's opener. Uh, these two sides were pretty even overall last year. Bournemouth are without their best player, and I think there's a chance they take a step or two back this year, even with Solanke, but especially without him, um, especially at the start of the year before they are able to find their replacement. And that puts me on Forrest at home on Saturday. And what – this sounds funny to say this because it's the first of 38 matches, but – Forest are probably a team that's going to be in and about the relegation battle this year. So a home game against – that's a winnable home game for them at any point in the year is a huge game for them to take all three points. So uh, I like them at plus 135. 
it's objectively very fun to have an opening match that matters like to that extent. Like I, I know how complicated re- relegation be to like bring to other leagues, but like the idea that a week or a match week one match could matter that much is 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 super super interesting to me. It's it's really awesome, and I think it happens at the other end of the table as well. Man City have been so just amazingly good <laughs> these last handful of years that if you're Arsenal it feels like you almost can't slip up. Like they play at home against Wolves and if they lost that game, it would be like, and I guarantee you all their fans would think, "Uh uh-oh, like did we just lose the title? (laughs) And it's like, obviously you didn't, but like that's the standard that Man City have set. So the way they have it, their system set up, I think it's it's really, really fun. And it's actually probably similar to NFL where it makes it seem as if every game is very important. Well, if Man City were to have a slip up like two or that or like that or two this year, we're not going to complain at that Arsenal future as well. That's okay, true. so the match week one bets Austin likes are the Nottingham Forest money line, the three way money line in 90 minutes plus stoppage time plus 135. And then, of course, uh, going with the Fulham to win or draw in the opening match plus 140 against Man United. That's all that we have here for today to break down the opening week and the futures market in the EPL. Again, you can find Austin on X at Austin Cast. Check out his work over at FanDuel Research, where he is a senior editor. Austin, appreciate the time as always. Enjoy the opening slate of the EPL. We'll talk to you once again in the very near future. Sounds good. Thank you, Jim. All right, again, Austin is on X at Austin Cass. I am on X at Jim Sonis. You can find FanDuel Research on X at FanDuel Research. Tomorrow, talking NFL preseason week two, UFC 305 on Friday as well. So a good week of shows. Make sure you're subscribed to get those as they go live. This has been Covering the Spread, a FanDuel Research podcast. 